Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our alumni chat series. My name is Aditya Shah, and um, I'm an equity research analyst at Romero Capital and a community leader at Romero Mentoring. And today we have with us Juan. Uh, Juan just got his full-time offer from uh, a BNP Paribas. And congratu- congratulations to you on that. And more importantly, how are you doing today? So far, so good. You know, as you spoke previously, it's the end of the semester. Um, I know we're all a bit tired, but I'm really just thankful and, and happy for the offer that I got the opportunity. And yeah, so far, so good. That's amazing. Uh, I mean, it's, you know, what, what's, what's delightful is that uh, a lot of people forget how thankful and grateful they are for the opportunity. And, not, and that the, the fact that you mentioned it uh, speaks a lot because um, every single day we go by our life so quickly that we do not take a time to you know understand what what we should be grateful for so it's 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 great that you you know you um sort of understood the importance of the opportunity and were thankful for for it um all of that i think uh, a little later but let's get down to the most important question as we already know what it is going to be um so you know we've just you know COVID-19 is just you know sort of come to a standstill at least in the US right now um there's not a lot of things going on so talking about your experience during quarantine um what was your favorite quarantine purchase and why well then that happened in COVID was COVID going yeah, on when you were when we were all in quarantine uh it would have to be this thing called Swift and it's like a mounting, um, like you put your road bike in it and you can ride within your home. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's oh. like a Batman. And I use that, um, I'm currently training for an Ironman. So, and that's where the, the inspiration came from. I would just train and do that for hours on end. Yeah. So yeah I would say that was, that was, that's my favorite um, COVID purchase. Yeah, that's amazing. And I mean, if it gave you an inspiration to, you know, uh, Try out for Iron Man. That's amazing. Yeah. Like, Iron Man is really difficult. One of my friends actually he did it a couple of years back, and uh, and my one of my friends is currently doing it right now. Um, so it's amazing. So I know three people who are going to become uh, Iron Man. Uh, Iron Men. It's, so it's called uh, <laughs> yeah. after completing the challenge. So it's amazing. Um, it's it's it's. it's... It's that race, the whole, I think that for me, the whole purpose of it is just, it tests, it's, it's a test of will, really. Yep. It's, it's, you get to a point where your brain is telling you stop, your body's shut, like it shuts down. And the only thing that's going to keep you going is your will. That's true. And I think that's a true test of will and see how strong your will is. And yeah. that's, I think that's the whole reason why people do, do those races. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Uh, and to understand that at such a young age, um, and I'm sure your, you know, your whole recruiting process and everything also sort of um, made you mentally strong, um, yeah. so that now you are able to, you know, pursue such difficult challenges. Um, so talking about your recruiting and everything else, um, you know, if it'd be great for the audience if you could, you know, walk us through your professional journey. You know, what were your long, sh- short-term goals? Now, what are your long-term goals after accepting this offer? For sure. Wow. Uh... This starts with me joining the AIS with an, I currently attend FIU, Florida International University, and I joined the AIS. The AIS is the Association for Information Systems. Within FIU, I'm majoring in analytics and computer information systems, nothing related to finance. And when I was in that association, I'm currently the VP for it. So it's been really a long process and a long journey. Mm-hmm. And I just got to connect with so many such amazing people amazing individuals in that organization and i got into those through the middle mentor. i always knew how to, i had this passion for finance but i just never knew how to break in how what are the positions within finance the different sectors within finance and i got into the sort of middle mentor. Mm-hmm. and through a middle mentor was my first time that i really saw what investment banking is and not necessarily investment banking corporate banking commercial banking southern trading all these different divisions and I joined Romero. I got I got I I got in here. Accept, I accepted me into the program, and I started. And after that, I also joined the SEO. Mm-hmm. Whilst I was doing Romero mentoring, I got the opportunity to work at BCI. BCI is a private Chilean bank. is amongst the top ten top ten banks in Latin America. Oh, wow. And I was working on their operations, but I also got to speak to a lot of people on wealth management and BCI securities. Nice. And that ignited like this passion for it more, even more. And then I just got to the point where I just 
you know, um, I might just go for it. Um, yeah. I believe there's a lot of doubt at the beginning. And I think we, you can relate to this and a lot of people can relate to this. Why me? You know, like yeah. why I don't go to a target school. If, if that means something to anyone, yeah. I, there might be people smarter than me. They might be people more prepared than me. There's people who did summer, um, sophomore, summer internships. And I didn't, and it's just like this constant battle in your mind. Like, why I'm not enough. Yeah. So I just went, once you get to the point, you need to just like, why not? Just yeah. try it out, just do it. Yeah. And I think it's just a matter of it's honestly, it's, it's, um, it's a game of numbers. Mm-hmm. People don't, I don't think they really understand how difficult this process is and what it really takes. Um, yes. We all, I think let's say you have a 5% acceptance rate or people who actually get an offer from banks. Yeah. So it's 5%. If you only do 10, that's that's 0.5 yeah. you don't even get one return <laughs> you do, if you do 100 then that's five yeah it's a number of games it's a it's, a, it's about consistency mm-hmm. and discipline you have no idea and i think you can also you and a lot of people can relate to this the amount of times that i got re- rejections and yeah. it's very demoralizing 100%. and it really is and then that um part of your head or your mind starts saying again i'm not enough yeah i don't get to a target school i've, I've why me? Like, honestly, I don't think I'm worth it. Yeah. And, but again, I feed off of that. Yeah. I'm not yeah. enough. Well, I'm going to be enough then. And yeah. then you start studying and then not necessarily getting mad, but you, you get that like um, intrinsic motivation that I'm going to be more prepared. Yes. I might not go to a target school or I have not at some more internship, but I'm just an outsource of knowledge. I'm going to ask, I'm going to prepare myself. I'm going to get more experience. And that's really valuable. And that plays off when you're interviewing and when you get those first opportunities and really just building that sense of confidence and not to the point where being cocky because I, I, I'm not cocky. I'm not a cocky individual and I really don't um, enjoy people who are cocky. But just I really, and I spoke to this with Mr. Romero, just having a really strong sense of confidence, a confidence that when you walk into a super day or a first screen call or anything for that matter, I'm confident that I'm good enough. I'm confident that you might be able to ask me a question and more or less, I will be able to answer that question. And if not, I have the, the confidence in me to say, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that I can find the answer and really just um, reason my way through it. So yeah, it's, it's been a long, a long process really. Um, I think I have a suggestion for you, Juan. Uh, I think just by listening to you for the first two minutes, I think you should quit investment banking. And you should become a motivational speaker. <laughs> well, Just by listening to you for minutes, I'm fired up. Honestly, <laughs> like I'm, I'm trying to make the most of my day today, and I will. I know that for sure. <laughs> These first two minutes is just amazing. Yeah, it's honestly, um, I'm someone who I like to read a lot, and let me see if I can show them to you. This book, I think this book plays such a pivotal role in my life. This one by David Goggins, "You Can't Hurt Me." Yeah. And this guy's a machine. And then I also got like connected that one with this one, which is, it's one of my favorite books really. And it's called Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday. And I just, those were the two books that really just ignited that passion in me. It ignited that sense of why not me? Why am I not enough? Mm-hmm. What's different? So, I mean, I kid you not, I apply to almost every bank on the street. Yeah. Like really, for any position. And it's a matter of, I just heard this phrase once and it's like um, beggars are not choosers or something like that. Yeah, like, and you have to be happy. With beggars can be choosers. That's what it's called. Exactly. That, that one. And that was my whole mindset. And I am good enough. And if I get an opportunity, well, and the opportunities in Wichita or in the middle of nowhere, well, then I go with a smile on my face uh-huh. because opportunity only knocks once and you have to be thankful for that yep. because it's a privilege and it is. Yep. That's the way I see it. And I did not take any phone call, any interview for granted. I prepared for them. I was not nervous, but that anxiety. Yeah. I use anxiety as fuel. Mm-hmm. Anxiety is my fuel. Anxiety is that thing that gets me to wake up early, to get off the couch, to start studying, to be prepared, to be to build the confidence. And you know, and and that's how I, I tackle all of this. And that's why I think I'm fortunate enough to have received um, as many returns offers as I did, and uh, and be able to make the decision that I did. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, you know, so moving ahead, uh, 
And for those of you who are, you know, sort of in the same situation as both of us were, uh, you know, if you were a freshman, sophomore, junior, you know, un uncertain about what your future is going to be, and you're trying to build up that confidence, I definitely recommend reading those two books. Um, I have uh, seen a couple of podcasts by David Rogers, if that's how it's pronounced. Yeah. And um, he is a total machine. He's a beast. Uh, and I also drive a lot of get a lot of inspiration from him. Um, so and uh, the ego is the enemy. I've heard about that book, but I've not read it. Um, so you should, uh, for those of you who are you know in this in that same phase of life, you should definitely uh, get your source of inspiration from uh, wherever. If you're not a books person, you know, watch a video, watch some sort of podcast, or listen to this. This will also get you. Audiobooks. Audiobooks, honestly, I listen to audiobooks a lot of times when I'm running. Yeah. And you're multitasking. Yeah. Basically. You don't have to read, but then listen to the book. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So moving on, um, what made you choose finance? And, you know, you were talking about that you, you always knew that you were, you were interested in finance. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, what made you choose finance and what made you interested in finance? And, um, and since you mentioned that Romero Mentoring also sort of introduced you to different fields within investment banking or within finance, like, Commercial banking, corporate banking, uh, sales and trading, etc. Why did you pursue investment banking over any of those other fields? Sure. Um, so for me, my two choices were the following: I have tech or finance. Which yeah. one do I want to choose? And then it really came to this. I, I'll, and honestly, when I'm trying to learn something or explain something, I don't necessarily, I don't, I don't believe that necessarily because uh, a topic is very complex. It's hard to grasp or to understand. I can explain to you something very complex if I understand it simplistically yeah. and I try to simplify everything as much as I can. Mm -hmm. I just ask myself, this is a matter of values about who I am and what aligns with who I am. Yeah. And finance is this beautiful field which is very intense and requires a lot. And it's not for the, for the, for people who are weak and people who lack will, I would just put it that way. And that just aligned with me. And I think it's just, um, I do believe in fate and my whole experience within BCI, then finding Romero. And then it's just a matter of like, this is for me. Yes. And, and once I understood that, I saw the value of here. Mm -hmm. And then more or less um, investment banking with Mr. Romero. And the first time I got interested, for example, say financial modeling, I'm like, yes. this is this is something that I would do and I would smile. Yes. I mean, and you're balancing, <laughs> when you're balancing your financial statements and they don't balance and they're yeah. so frustrating. And it's then frustrating. One of them, they balance and it's just yeah. like the best feeling in the I world. Know. I feel like I've been there on <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, those things are just i don't know it's something that you see it makes me smile it makes me yeah. happy and 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 i'm thankful honestly again i'm so thankful for the opportunity that i got because the, the more i talk to people for example you mr romero um another mentee from Romero, julio and then a lot of um when i got interviewed with bmp i got into i make got to meet um a vp uh and other two amazing individuals and I don't know. It's just something about the field that aligns with who I am more than more beyond my technical skills, my, my, um, yeah, my technical skills. It's just who I am really. Yeah. It's a perfect, it's perfect. It's perfectly aligned. I believe so. That's amazing. That's amazing that you were able to find, um, uh, what you were truly interested in and what your inner values were, uh, and you know, your profession sort of aligns with your inner, inner, inner values. And it's, it's hard to find that a lot of people, you know, in their mid thirties, mid forties are still not able to do that. Um, so it's great that you were able to find your calling and you were pursuing it and you were actually through your mental toughness, through, um, you know, the motivation, which you had, um, and your, you being able to thrive off the rejections, you were able to accomplish such great things at such a young age. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, um, just to talk about how many rejections, talking about rejections and your mentality and how you, how you came up with that. Um, how many rejections did you receive? And wow. uh, I know, I know that you talked about those books and your inner, inner mentality to that helped you keep on going, but was there anything else that keep, kept you motivated? And, um, what advice would you have students, uh, who are in a similar position? 
faith in myself, faith mm -hmm. in that I am good enough. I have, have, I have prepared. And, you know, I try to, when it comes to this, I try to get as binary as I can. Am I good enough? Yes. Have I studied? Yes. So then why not? And I mean, when it comes to those rejections, <laughs> man, it's been a lot. It's been, I believe, easily more than 40. Yeah. Easily. Absolutely. And again, it's very demoralizing. But I, again, for one bank, I particularly, I applied for 20 different positions within that same bank. And I did the 20 hire because for each position. So, you know, it's, it's getting to the point where I can, for example, and I think we spoke about this, I can, for the interviews for that bank or for any bank, for any higher view, I can, I know the answers by memory. I yeah. memorize those answers by repetition. And not even because of the higher views, there's, there's this thing called, which um, if anyone here is about to interview or it's, um, or it's afraid of higher views or uh, those mocking virtual interviews, there's this thing called VOMER, V-O-O-M-E-R, and it's like a mock higher view. And it's, again, the same questions. You choose a company you're interviewing for, and they ask you specific questions, and it's a recording. You're just recording yourself. I easily did more than 500 interviews. Wow. I did that one day from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And, and I said, I am not. <laughs> the first time I did it, and I watched the recording, I was like, man, this is horrible. I did not help <laughs> myself. <laughs> if I was yeah. me. So then I just did it, and I sat down. And I said, from 7, I remember this, from 7 a.m. till 7 p.m. I was 12 hours sitting at my desk, and I said, I'm not going to move until I'm able to say each answer each question perfect or as close to perfection as I can. Yes. And and it's again that type of mentality that you need to have. Yeah. And don't quit. Don't. So okay, you had a reaction. Okay, you're, are you going to quit? Yeah. No. <laughs> you got another one. Ask yourself again, are you going to quit? No. And then yeah. you get another one. Are you going to quit? No. And which each interview, each rejection, believe me, you get better interview. You get stronger. So much it, better. You're building that momentum. And it's just about, and that resilience too. And yeah. you, I mean, I, you get fired up, honestly. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Well, then we're going to go again. No, again. Okay. Then we're going to go yeah. again. And that's, that's a type of mentality, honestly, that you need to have. You cannot have, um, you're going to get, yes, you can. You're allowed to feel bad and you're allowed to get hurt. We're humans after all. We have emotions. I have emotions and, and it hurts. It does. But it's just about that resilience, about getting up and doing it. I mean, that's the way I was raised. And I owe this to my mom and my dad. And, and honestly, it's just about you. How many, okay. It's not about how many times you fall down. It's about how many times yeah. you're going to get up. And True. I'm going to get up. If I fall a thousand, then I'm going to get a thousand, up a thousand and one. True. And if you have that mentality and you're in that headspace and you have people surrounding you surround yourself with people who are like-minded like that, then that's half the battle right there. Yeah, that's true. And, and the fact that you said that uh, if you surround yourself with like-minded people, that's, that's, that's also huge because uh, if you, if your if your friends are, uh, or if people who around you are not as motivated, um, they're lazy, you know, they're like sitting on the couch, just, you know, wasting their day off completely you will get some of it from them. Like if, if, even if you're the most motivated person and you surround yourself with most unmotivated, demotivated people, you will get demotivated some, somewhere down the line. So it's very, very important to surround yourself with like-minded people who have the same passions, the same desire, the same drive, and uh, the same inclination to make it out of the world as much as you do, or even more if, if you were able to find them. Yes. That's, also, that's amazing. Yeah, you... you... <laughs> I believe that we can learn something from anyone, even if it's from the person that's really lazy, just sitting down on the couch, you can learn something from them. Yes, and for 100%. me, was, they taught me that, do I want to do that? What's the value of yeah. a proposition involved in this? Zero. Uh -huh. That's what they got. That's a lesson right there. And yeah. I learned that. I was like, there's no way I want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> true. True. Uh, but, and also I think Romero mentoring, uh, because, you know, the high, accept the low acceptance rate, which we have, um, um you know, and then we as a community are um have a really smart people really driven people so if you interact with people within Romero mentoring you get you also get a lot of inspiration and a lot yes. of motivation because um people out there are doing really really great things i mean what 97 percent of the people who join Romero mentoring end up getting a return offer so that, that's, that's something about, that says a lot about the community which Mr. Romero has been able to build. And it's yes. growing day by day. So being just being part of that community and just feeding off each, each and everyone's, you know, more, um, dreams and desires 
that can give you a lot of motivation too. And, and it's a great place to, you know, network because everybody is working at, you know, the, the creme de la creme, the, the yeah, top. The, this is the, the special thing about Romero mentoring. Yeah. It's not just, it's not a service. It's yeah. not, we're going to teach you to financial model. We're going to teach you to an LBO, how to use Excel. No, it's not that it's, the community when you speak to people when you speak for example for me it was when i spoke to mr romero when i spoke to mike exactly that's the same for me I spoke to you when i spoke to julio every time i spoke to some it builds you up and yeah. it, it it gives it's a different lens and uh-huh. it, it, and it's it's like this um light at the end of the tunnel in a good way in the manner that th- there's guidance there's if you're willing to put in the work then i'm going to help you and that's th- that's what separates romero mentoring that it's the, everyone that's in the community it's people who is more than willing to do the work yeah. and then that's why mr romero is more than willing to help you and it's i think i would not be where i am today if we, if it we weren't for mr romero's help and mm-hmm. that's so that's really important he plays yeah. such a pivotal role in my life and in my career and again i'm really thankful yeah. for that yeah same uh, i mean when i came to romero mentoring i did not even know what um you know an income statement was and here you know two years later i'm you know doing portfolio valuation for hula and loki <laughs> all because of mr romero and you know it's it's the way the way he motivates you um i remember in one of my meetings uh he was like um I, I was i was i was talking to him about my rejection he's like he, he told me the same thing ask yourself are you gonna quit at the theater and i was like no nah, i'm not gonna quit at this point like you know, <laughs> i'm not I'm better than that <laughs> so you know just by him asking you these questions which you already know answers of but you never have asked yourself these questions it it builds you a lot and it builds it it's 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 really really motivating um so you know moving on um just talking about your role and your experience at BNP Paribas can you briefly describe what your role is going to be and uh, sort of which division are you working in and which coverage group and uh, you know what how is your experience been Sure. So it's going to be, it's an internship for 10 weeks. It's a 10 week internship. It's a rotational internship. So I'll get to go for um, cross asset structuring, uh, fixed income, equities, um, credits, and commodities, currencies. You get, you get rotated a lot. And me, for example, I'm really trying to get into specifically the credit side of things, for example, the CLOs. And that's my passion. But again, it's such a big value proposition here that mm-hmm. honestly, any desk is such a the opportunity to learn really. yeah. and and what really made me chose this particular bank is when i interview the people that there's this again it's gonna sound redundant but the sense of people of human beings when i interview i really got that and i interview with honestly a lot of banks and a lot of companies and this was the one yeah. that I connected honestly and I can tell you this um truthful truthfully it's that this was the hardest interview and mm-hmm. it's funny for me because everything that I did previously this was my last interview honestly yeah. because by the next Monday I, I had the last deadline for a contract which I was going to sign uh-huh. and BMP just kind of like I just got an email for an invitation for a super day and I just like why not you know I'm just gonna do it and it was the hardest super day out of all of them the most technical, the hardest one, but it was the one that I enjoyed the most. Yeah. And it was the one that I, I was so comfortable really interviewing and I was comfortable because they made me comfortable. Yeah. And that's play such it's, I didn't feel like a number. I didn't feel like um, this was a machine. I, I felt this human, the sense of yeah. human. They wanted you that there was a place in the company for you. Instead yes. of, you know, if, if you'd left like nothing would have happened if you were if you were to join any other company so mm-hmm. um that's just as the same thing about how i felt about hulahan also like uh i interviewed also for a lot of companies uh, a lot of big buzz bracket firms as well yeah. but the thing was that um the main i wanted to join them but the th- there, there was something in me which was saying you know there's something better for you out there because over there working for like a big buzz bracket firm over there it's so they're so big that if you even if you leave tomorrow or even if you don't show up to work yeah. for a week nobody's gonna care yeah 
So, and that's, that's just such the, the funny thing here. Not the funny, but the, the really interesting thing is, for example, BNP has just acquired the brokerage, the brokerage system from Deutsche Bank. And also, they also acquired Xan. They have 50%, now they have 100%. Yeah. They're, they're a monster by itself. And yeah. now, I mean, they're, they're, they're just competing with Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, Goldman yeah. Sachs. BNP is going to be there. Yeah. And a monster, such a company like that, and they treat their employees. I mean, you can just see it in the news. Um, there's not a lot of people getting laid off by that company. Yeah. And there's a lot of people coming from these big banks to this bank and they stay there for years. Yeah. And there's just something, the culture, the, the, even when you, when you, when you, when you, for example, I, two weeks ago, one week ago, I heard an interview they made to the CEO and he values his talent. He really yeah. sees the value in people. And that's something really important when you're getting, when you're trying to choose what company to go in, especially mm-hmm. like us, which is um, very early on our career. Yeah. I think it's it was a move that my mind, my soul, and my heart told me this is the right choice, and I I'm, I'm completely happy that I made wow. it. That's amazing, actually. Um, so you know, just talking about your whole interview process, could you you know for the viewers who might be interviewing for uh, BNP Paribas right now or in the future, uh, how was your interview process? You know, you said that it was the most difficult. So how many how many interview how many uh, stages of interview did you have? Um, and uh, how did you prepare for it? I got two. Okay. I got um, a screen. I think it's called a screen phone call, uh-huh. which was just a regular phone call with a recruiter. And I got to ask a lot of, um, not necessarily technical questions, but why would why you want to apply here? What particular division interests you? Um, who are you? Where do you come from? What are your, excuse me, what are your experiences? Just more basic stuff. Uh-huh. And, I think that's the part where you need to shine. Yes. Not, not shine, but like, no, no, don't force something that you're not, but uh-huh. just be your true self. True. And I just, I, I'm always myself and I was myself in a call. And I was like, this is why I'm interested in this bank. This is yeah. why I believe in this. And I did my due diligence, honestly. You need to read. You, can just, you cannot just show up to an interview yeah. and just like, wonder, like, okay, I'm just going to wing it. No, yeah. <laughs> you don't do this. For and this. they can sense that. They can sense that if you're trying to do that. Oh, completely. They can sense you're speaking out of confidence. Yeah. And, and not, again, not in a cocky manner, but in a very confidence manner. Like, if you want to speak at length about this, I can. More than happy yeah. to do so. Yeah. And, and again, that sense of confidence, knowledge, but that sense of, um, again, uh, humility and that sense of, I'm thankful for this opportunity. I'm really, I mean, I really see the value of proposition here and I really value it. That's even in the way that you speak, they can hear it. And then from that first phone call, I think like two weeks passed and I just got an email yeah. saying that I was invited. And, even, and, within, and I applied to a lot of different positions mm-hmm. within the, and I just, in my, the back of my head, I was like, I don't think I'm gonna get it. They wouldn't even reach out to me. Yeah. And they did. And I was, I was just, wow, like, this is amazing. And yeah. I just, again, anxiety, anxiety kicked in. Yep. <laughs> be done. And, I, and I just started, honestly, the best way to prep is to read that for me, really understand what's going on, understand the economic cycle, what's happening in the world. What is your own perspective on your own views? Like if, if you have a conversation with someone, why was it difficult? Well, it wasn't, it was, it was difficult in the good sense that it was a conversation where I got to expose and, and, and share what I thought it was going on in the world and, and the impacts of those, the, the certain things and the repercussions of that. Uh-huh. It's, it was not a technical that you were like, um, how do you calculate this? How would you do this process? And you explain the process. It's like, okay, check, move on. Yeah. No, it wasn't like that. And again, that sense of human beings and sense of people. And I got instrumental to, to the super day and the super day were, I believe, three 30-minute interviews. Okay. <laughs> and I remember this because I was so nervous. Yeah. And I clicked on training and as soon as they moved me into the breakout room, <laughs> I forgot his name. It was, he was super friendly, but the first thing he told me was like, well, you got the technical first. <laughs> uh, man. <laughs> well, that's, 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 that's the worst thing. When you're nervous and then they, they ask you the technical questions first, they're like, damn, man. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it was so, um, it was, it was a blessing really. This guy, it was a curse. This guy is a blessing because I got uh, the hardest questions first. Okay. And I just, we, I, again, it was not a technical question in the sense that um, what, is, what is the stock market? What is the bond market? What, okay. is, what are indexes? What is theta, beta, gamma? No, 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 none of that really. It was more about my opinions okay. in respect to the markets. And why, and for example, if 
I remember I got asked this question. If the state of Florida were to disappear, build me an, build me an investment strategy. Okay. Wow. And so, yeah, it's, it's not those technical questions that what you usually get. What, what was your answer? Well, honestly, this is funny because the first thing in my, I don't know why, the first thing that came to in my head was like short orange companies because Florida, it's, it's a, that the supply, it's my, the main state for the supply, that supplies oranges. So the okay. little country. <laughs> and we're just like I said that, but then I started thinking, okay, the tourism, tourism is gonna go down. Yeah, electricity, electricity is gonna go down because of Florida power line, and then, then then we went into the bond market, and then why did why did you invest in society for the yield curve and all of that those things? And again, it was back and forth. I never felt cornered in that entry. Right. I never right. felt like they're pressuring me for an answer. And right. even for example, questions like, tell me the square square root of eight hundred. Tell me the square root of 125. You yeah, have yeah. a minute, 30 seconds. Please do not use a calculator. Yeah. And, but he, it was hard questions, but I never felt, I don't want to say threatened, but I never felt under uh, pressure in a bad way. Yeah. It was like, it was more like a fun challenge. Like, can you do this? Yeah. It'll be awesome. If you, if, you can, if you can do it, it's awesome. Like, perfect. Yeah. If you can, no worries. Yeah. But if you can, amazing. Yeah. And yeah. then I went into a more of a, the, the second interview, I really connected mm-hmm. with, with that individual. He's a VP in the bank. And again, who I am as an individual aligned with who he is. And I really look up to him. And it was just such a, a f- enjoyable com- I mean, we were mid-interview. And I remember he told me, like, I'm not even going to ask you this question. We're just going to have a conversation. That's good. That's amazing. That's that's like really comforting uh, going into an interview. Say it again. That's so comforting going into an interview. It's like when the recruit when the when the interviewee is like, you know, forget everything. Let's just have a conversation. Let's get it. It was 30 minutes and yeah. we it got caught short. Yeah. <laughs> like we wish we could have kept on talking because it was we were really enjoying the conversation. Yeah. And then for my last interview, I got I was interviewed with this really sweet and kind lady. And it was more about how um, her work and everything that she, I think she's involved with. And I remember she was involved with cryptocurrencies nice. and she explains to me her work and me asking questions and do the repercussions of that. Again, a conversation. And then what are my values? How do I manage my time? How have I gotten to where I am today? Mm-hmm. Um, what motivates me intrinsically and why, you yeah. know, it's questions that you need to know before you go into the interview, know yeah. yourself. And, and again, be your true self. Do mm-hmm. not try to be something you're not. And if you don't, Oh, and for example, in the technical, he asked me a question and I didn't know. And I said, I don't know. Yeah. And I told him, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to say, I don't know, because I do not want to waste your time. Yeah. Why do I try? Why would I try to lie and, and I come know. up with something? Just be honest. I don't know. And I really do not want to waste your time. Yeah. In, the, in a very humble you know, manner. Like if suppose like a scientist were to ask him a question, the interviewee question about science, he would also not, probably not know. So like, it's, it's fine if you do not know, but it, if you can show that you're willing to um, sort of understand what the problem is and willing to find the answer later, that's what they, that's, that's what very important. important. That's for example, I just at home, I don't know, but I know this about that. Yes. Like, I know, like I am familiar with it. Yeah. Like I, but that particular thing, I do not know, but I can show you, yeah. I know a lot of other stuff. And yes. highlighting that is really important. And Both also, the fact that you can- I don't know. Yeah, I know. I completely understand that. And also the fact that you are, it's within your personality to be curious and you are willing to, you're curious enough to that you are, uh, you can go and find the answers to those questions if you do not know that. So if you are the person, you know, who after the interview gets over uh, and you do not know this, whatever question you you were asked, um, you Google it. If you are that kind of person, then you are completely the best fit for the company because it's fine that you do not know this at the moment but if you are able to find those answers that's that that's what they look for and that's what they sort of um, you know judge you during your inter- in the whole interview process for because by the end of it there are a lot of things which they also don't know but they are uh, they know where to find and how to find those answers Does that mean? and i remember for example when they asked me the question the square root of 800 yeah you start, I get, I just started multiplying a number by itself and I got up to like 27. Then I said, no, that's too low, 29, too high, 20. And I said 28. Yeah. And he told me it's 28.2, but I let it slide. And yeah. that's the type of level that you need to be on if you're interviewing for this bags. Like you need to be sharp. Yeah. Yeah. But don't be something you're not and be yeah. your true self. 
I completely agree. Um, so even I got to cut this uh, this chat series short. Uh, I wish I could, you know, um, continue talking to you. Um, but you know, just a last question. You know, what advice do you have uh, for incoming freshmen and sophomores who are interested in pursuing careers in finance? I know you mentioned being yourself. I know you mentioned, you know, um, taking rejections well. Uh, but anything else that you would really, really want to focus on so that, you know, this whole experience becomes really, really uh, informative for uh, people watching. Yes. Um, what I would have liked someone to tell me when I was beating this, it would be to dominate, to learn, to have this type of mindset where you are never going to be prepared enough. And that's how you need to feel. I'm never going to be prepared enough. So I need to read more. I need to experience more. I need to always be learning more. And if you're in that headspace, that's half the battle. Because you always want to keep learning new things and new things and new things and new things. And your values want to increase exponentially. Okay. And have that hunger to learn. Have that anxiety and being nervous. That's okay. We're yeah. human. Yeah. However, this is, this is the most important thing. Learn that you cannot control everything, but those things that you can control, control them. Yeah. And anxiety and being nervous, leverage them. Yeah. Don't be afraid of them. Understand them. And then how would this help me? Every, think of, every bit of leverage that you can use, use it. Because you're going to need it. Yeah. Especially for this field, it's very competitive. Yeah. So leverage it. That would be something that I would wish someone would tell me when I was first beginning the whole, this whole process. That is amazing. That's, uh, I think... That's very, very, very powerful. And that's very, very informative for students, you know, who are in the, in the stage, in this stage of their lives right now. Um, and having said that, um, I think this brings us to the end of the, the chat series. It was, uh, honestly, it was great, great, great talking to you. It's a great start to my morning, you know, talking to someone who's so motivated, so positive. And um, I hope the viewers can also get a little bit of motivation from this and get a little bit of insight and do well and achieve their dreams. Uh, I really enjoyed it and thank you for your time. Yes, thank you so much. Bye.